Hey, welcome to Wanderlusting Lawyer. If you are based in the U.S., I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And if you're joining us from outside of the U.S., welcome. I realized that I actually never finished with my daily, my videos talking about each day on the Camino Aragones that I did this past summer. Um, so that was in July 2021. And I left off at day seven, the journey from Ruesta to Sangüesa. So that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Uh, so this isn't one of the longer days on the Camino Aragones. It's about a 22 kilometer day that leads you out of the Aragon region and into Navarra. The Camino Aragones just goes through these two regions in Spain. Um, so as is tip pretty typical for this Camino, and you know, if you've watched my other videos or if you've traveled on this Camino, uh, there aren't many stops. And in fact, there's nowhere to stop for the first about 11 and a half kilometers. Uh, so you want to be sure that you have either something to eat in your pack and plenty of water. Um, cause I can't, I don't remember there being a water fountain either, um, in that first part, or, you know, if you stayed at the albergue in Ruesta, uh, there should have been a breakfast offering. I think it was really just toast and coffee, but make sure you get something before you get started on your day because you're looking at a couple hours journey uh, before you'll have a chance to stop. Um, so the day starts with a light descent from Ruesta uh, through some really pretty pine forests. It's very, it has a very green nature feel. Um, and you'll cross a wooden bridge that leads over the Rio Regal. And when you do that, be sure to look back and you should get a really cool view of the village of Ruesta um, up above. It's it's an abandoned village. You'll know you'll have just stayed there um, or at least gone through it. And it's a really pretty view from down below. So make sure to do that. Um, after that, you will come across what's a pretty neat building on this Camino. And I hadn't really heard or, or read much about it before, but it was apparently built in the 11th century called the Ermita de Ruesta. Uh, it looks like a church, but from what I read, it looks... Um, it may have once housed pilgrims who were on the route and needed a place to stay. It was closed when I walked by, but um, when I was doing some research about it and came across pictures that other people have taken, it looks like uh, they've done some restoration of it in recent years. It looked uh, really clean and they had um, changed kind of the landscaping in front. So if it's open, it might be a cool place to stop inside and see. Uh, after this, make sure you get a good, make sure you're um, hydrated and, you know, have a, have eaten recently and maybe a snack. If you didn't get breakfast, it'd be a good time because you're going to start what becomes a 300 meter climb over several kilometers. Um, and there are some areas of flattens out, but it's a pretty steady climb the whole time. And there are areas where you walk up and you just see uphill and you can't really see where it ends uh, and it'll curve around and uh, it'll be a little bit daunting, but it's doable. You know, it's certainly not harder than crossing the Pyrenees, either on this route or on the Frances, or it's nothing like the day uh, you walk to Osebrero in Galicia. So it's doable. It's just a pretty long stretch where you're going up um and the day that I walked it it was like got close to nine I think it was in the 90s Fahrenheit and maybe like 33 34 Celsius so a lot of people had tried to hit the road early I tend to sleep in a little later so I was one of the last to leave but the the section was decently well shaded I think I remember um but it was pretty warm so you'll keep going up for a while. And then once you get to the top, uh, as long as they haven't changed anything, there'll be a picnic bench on your left. So it's a good place to stop and have a rest if you're tired. Um, and, and I will say too, the, the uphill section is really pretty. It's through those same pine forests and um, got some good pictures there. So it's at least a nice view as you're going up. But yeah, you'll see that picnic bench and then you'll know that after there, you're more or less going to be going downhill for the next about four and a half, five kilometers until you finally get to uh, the first place you'll have to stop. And when you're at the top, I'm, it's pretty tough to miss, but you'll have a really, really lovely view of the Yesa Reservoir or in Spanish, the Embalse de Yesa. It has 
like turquoise waters and you'll have seen it before in your approach to Ruesta when you're going through that forest that in my last video I talked about how the approach to Ruesta the last like three kilometers were through this forest and I had no idea if I was going in the right way but I just kept tracking the um in the Yesa reservoir on my right and it's a beautiful beautiful um body of water and so you'll get, uh, that'll be the last view you have of that as you um, are when you get to the top of the ascent out of Ruesta. So then you'll head downhill into Andues de Lerda, which is uh, the only town on this day that you'll come across. So if you want to have a short day, um, this is a good town to stop in. There's not a lot going on, but there's at least, I know there's an albergue, there might be more accommodations there and there's a cute even if you just want to stop for a little bit and rest there's a cute um restaurant right in the city center right in the village center i should say by the church there are also water fountains there and it was cool um you know by the time i got there other people had stopped there and so it was a little mini reunion and there were only like nine of us walking on the same kind of the same day trajectory and so that was nice to see them since I spent a lot of time walking alone on this route um so yeah you can stay there if you want or you can continue at this point you're about I'd say halfway I think to Sanguesa um so you continue you'll continue downhill out of Andues de Lerda for a while and then it's really <laughs> a long flat dusty shadeless and uh pretty hot if you have full sun walked into Sanguesa um, the good news is it's tough to get lost at this point, so you just continue ahead. It feels very meseta-like. I know I've said this before on, on I think, on uh, at least one other video talking about the Aragonese, but I feel like this is really all of the Caminos, all of the stages of the Camino Frances into one mini Camino, and this is really the meseta part. Um, so, it's, I mean, it's beautiful. There's some stark, stunning scenery, but... Um, at least in that part of July, it was incredibly dry. There was a lot of, uh, you know, golden wheat looking foliage and not a lot of uh, green or flowers or anything like that. But again, set against a blue sky, it was really pretty. Um, and then when you get to Sanguesa, there are plenty of places to stay. It's, I think, the biggest city on this route. Um, well, certainly just since Haka, Haka is the biggest city. And I'm not sure if Sanguesa is bigger than Punta la Reina, but, um, you know, it's a place you'll be able to use an ATM if you need. There are supermarkets, lots of restaurants, places to stay. There is a municipal albergue, but I decided to stay at a private albergue just upon reaching the town. Uh, I wanted to sleep in a private room after a couple of n not great sleep nights in, uh, in shared accommodations with some snores. But um, yeah, it's a cool it's a it's a nice spot I couldn't find a way to get down to the river which I had really wanted to but there are several churches to see um lots of streets to walk around there's uh looks like there was a bullfighting ring which was the only one I saw in this Camino um which I, I don't go to bullfighting I never have but you know it's an interesting element of Spanish culture um uh, for sure so yeah this is a this is I'd say you get the physically the toughest aspect is in the first half of the day and the second half of the day is probably mentally a little more tough just because it's long and straight and not super um interesting <laughs> although you know it has its own type of interest those those longer dusty days but yeah this was day seven Ruestas to Sanguesa and if you have any questions if you're you know looking into doing this particular Camino I know there aren't a ton of resources out there and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have and if you have done this Camino uh, let me know what your favorite part of of this day was thanks guys buen Camino